I sat in bed, with my book laying over my chest. The book I couldn't get through, because every time I started reading, my mind drifted. To make matters worse, Val wouldn't stop calling. Couldn't he take the hint? Yeah? Hey. What do you want, Val? I've been calling. I know. But you don't want to talk. I've mentioned that a few times. It's been months. It's been six weeks. Seven weeks. It's midnight. Have you been drinking? No. No, I haven't. Okay. You don't believe me? I didn't say that. I'm calling because I miss talking to you. We've talked in those seven weeks. I want to see you. When can I see you? I don't know. When are you coming home? I don't know. Okay. It hurt to talk to him. I was still so angry, so upset. So how's Ricky? What? How's Ricky? I heard you've been talking to him. Seeing him. I... Oh, I talk to him from time to time. He checks up on me. You were talking to him too. I was, yeah. Not so much anymore. Heard you guys went to dinner. Did you? Once. Just once? Just once. <laughs> You're a terrible liar, Delilah. Oh, he's someone to talk to. Just talk? Just talk. And that's the truth. Right. Is there anything else, Val? No. No. Seven Lamb Productions presents The Stone House. Episode 11. That night, once again, I couldn't sleep. After Gavin's outburst, I stayed in my room until him and Noah went to bed. Now it was late. I kept tossing and turning, thinking of the figure on the lighthouse. Was it real? Did I actually see someone? I sat up, staring at all the new toys in my room. Where did this stuff come from? And why was he decorating with his, I'm assuming, wife's stuff? I was trying to piece everything together. He wanted to make my room more comfortable. Why? Because I wouldn't be leaving anytime soon? Val didn't seem to think a boat was coming. And now, neither did I. My heart sank at the thought of Val. All these new clothes, the new shelves, I went into the bathroom and turned on the faucet. I splashed some water on my face, noticing the bags under my eyes. The moonlight came in through my bedroom's window across the hall and bounced off the mirror. I looked so exhausted. You are, Dee. You are. I cupped some water and drank. It was so cold, it made me want to climb back under the blankets. I stood there in the bathroom for a good long while as I thought about what could have really happened to Val. Gavin had a temper, and Val did too. Did something happen between them? Was that Val at the lighthouse? No. No, Dee. It couldn't be. He would have come down with your yelling. And why would he stay there? The more I thought about it, the more I convinced myself that no one was there. But then I thought about the man Val said he saw. 
who crawled on the ground. Was that Gavin or Noah? It couldn't be, right? I walked out of the bathroom and looked down the hall. The door at the end had never been opened. I assumed it was a closet, but I went to it, curiosity getting the better of me. But as with the lighthouse, this door was locked too. Why? If this is his island and no one else is here, why are so many doors locked? Is this where all his wife's stuff was being held? Then more thoughts rushed to me. Gavin's wife, Nadia, where was she? Did she really leave for work? And if so, why would he store all her stuff away? Unless they shared a room. No. No. They didn't. He said that was his wife's room. Plus, he kept mentioning... impurities. So maybe they never shared a room because of his son? But still, why store her stuff? Not only that, but Noah's room was pretty bare as well. None of it made sense. Absolutely none of it. My leg was still very much in pain, but I had been able to move myself to the pool. I stared down into the icy water, but wasn't able to see much since the clouds had moved in, blocking the outside moonlight. I waited calmly for them to disperse, and when they did, the bodies became visible once again. Who were these people? <sighs> I'd wrapped strips of my shirt around the break, but it definitely wasn't sturdy enough, and I was worried that the bone might separate again. But what else could I do? I had to figure something out. So as I stared down at the bodies, I contemplated my approach. It was so cold, and I was already shivering. Hell, if the broken leg didn't kill me, hypothermia would. Fuck it. Oh man, this was gonna suck. I grabbed a rock the size of a grapefruit to my left, took a breath, and leaned forward. I sank to the bottom of the icy pool, the water stinging my body. I had to hurry. I had landed right next to one of the bodies. I wasn't sure which one, but I was right next to the ropes. I pulled out a small, sharp rock from my back pocket and using only my right hand, cut the rope at the person's feet. It took forever since I was forced to hold onto the large rock to keep me on the pool floor. I was also careful not to move my leg too much, not that it mattered. I still felt pain with every light movement. I needed air, but I was almost done. Almost. This was taking too long. I would need to let go of the rock soon. Come on. I pressed the rope against the rock wall of the pool and continued to slice back and forth, back and forth. Please. My vision was starting to get blurry. Come on. Finally, the rope snapped and the body slowly floated up. I let go of the grapefruit-sized rock and rushed past it, careful not to kick my legs. I used the rock wall to quicken my ascent. <laughs> Jesus. Damn, that wasn't easy. Eventually, the body came up to the surface, bobbing right next to me, face down. It was the female, the taller one. The bloated, waxy skin rubbed against me. God damn it. I pushed it away. Okay. One down. Three to go.
Dear, no one needs your help out in the garden. I hadn't left my room all morning, and I could tell it was bothering Gavin. Dear, you need to come out. I was surprised he didn't barge in yet. Dear! What? I opened the door to see him standing there, covered in dirt and sweat. Enough sulking. The boy needs your help. I'm not sulking. I'm tired. You haven't been sleeping well. Is that really a shock? No one needs your help. You've said that. Why? Why? Haven't you been helping him? I need to tend to the coops. They haven't been cleaned in some time. Okay. You don't want to look after me, son? Can't he come inside? I don't know much about city life, or where you're from, but here, we work. Constant work. Much upkeep. There's too much to do than just sit around and let the day pass wallowing about something you can't even fix. Ugh. He pushed his way in and sat on my bed. Do you understand, dear? I wanted to go for a walk soon. He rubbed his temples and grimaced. A walk. A walk. Always with a walk. I need to clear my head. Haven't you cleared it yet? No, I haven't. He ran his hand through his thinning black hair and looked about the room, as if taking in all the new decorations for the first time. I don't understand. You don't understand what? Look at your room. This weren't easy. But we made it nice, don't you think? The plant, the plant was Noah's idea. Don't you like it? I don't get why it's here. I don't get why any of this is here. I motioned to the clothes, the shelf, the knickknacks. You don't like it? I just need to go for another walk. You see, we need work done here. Noah puts in his time for the family. Why can't you? Gavin, I'm not a part of this family. <sighs> he rubbed his chin as he stared at the floor beneath him. No. No, no, no. That ain't right. No, just ain't right. You are. You are. What? You are. You are. You are a part of this family. What? You are. Now. We stared at each other for a long time. I didn't know what to say to that. What the fuck was he talking about? And you ain't going for no more walks. What? I followed Gavin out of the room and into the living room. Excuse me, what did you just say? I said you ain't going for no more walks. Well, that's not really up to you, is it? Dear, we won't speak another word of this. I'll do what I want. You'll stay by my house. That's where you're needed, and that's where you'll stay. Bullshit! His whole body tensed. Then he charged. <clears throat> he grabbed my face with one hand and my side with the other. He slammed me against the wall, right next to the fireplace. Several photos fluttered to the ground around us. His large hand covered my mouth, and this was the first time I was genuinely scared for my life. Stop. Stop moving. Stop! I froze, our eyes locked. I told you, I won't have that language, you hear me? He was too strong. I was pinned. You hear me? I nodded. I could feel a tear sliding down my cheek. I... He held me for a moment longer before slowly loosening his grip. I slid down to the floor, a crumpled mess. I fought with all my strength to keep from breaking. I couldn't believe he just did that. I could feel my blood rising. Not only was I scared, but I was angry. As he headed for his room, I slowly got up, using the wall to keep steady. And just before he turned the corner, I blurted out, Who else is on this island? What? Who else is on this island? I saw someone at the lighthouse. And Val saw someone before we reached your house. You didn't see anyone. I did. I'm not sure why I was egging him on, especially after what just happened. But I was so angry now. I did see someone, and so did Val. 
You didn't, and neither did Val. I can assure you of that, dear. Gavin turned and left the room. I stared down at my shaking hands. On the floor, several pictures, which a moment ago clung to the wall. I bent down and picked one up. It was of Noah and another girl. Was this a relative or friend? I then went to the wall and looked at the other photos. Only one showed Gavin. The one with the woman with the mole to the right of her nose. Nadia, I presumed. The only photo that was bent and worn. But why? I had freed three of the bodies, two of which now floated freely on the surface, the other hovering halfway down, possibly snagged on some rocks. One male and two females. There was one body left, but I was exhausted, my body sore, my broken leg throbbed. <laughs> I wanted to rest, but every time I closed my eyes, I was worried I wouldn't open them again. As I stared at the closest body, that of a young girl, face down, motionless, I couldn't help but think of... Why, Val? Don't. Not right now. There are more important matters. I wanted to search the bodies, but I was too cold, too exhausted, so instead I laid back down and took the chance of closing my eyes. I ended up helping Noah in the garden like Gavin wanted. He had put a fear in me that I wasn't ready for. I thought about trying to talk to Noah again, but he wouldn't engage, like usual. It was also hard because every time Gavin would walk by, Noah would completely shut down. But right now, Gavin was in the barn doing God knows what. Maybe the coops weren't done. But I took this chance to try again with Noah. I went to his room where I found him playing with his favorite car. <laughs> He stopped when I entered, looking at me with wide eyes. Hey there, buddy. Mm hmm? Your dad is in the barn right now. I was wondering if maybe we could talk? I know you don't really want to, but maybe... <sighs> I sat on the floor next to him. I wasn't sure how exactly to go about this, but I brought something with me that could possibly help. Look, Noah. These fell off the wall earlier, and I was wondering if you could help me put these back up. Mm. But I was also wondering if you could tell me who this was? I held up the picture with him and the young girl with straight brown hair and dimple on her chin, but all he did was turn away. No? Okay. What about this one? It was of Gavin and the woman with the mole by her nose. I assumed it was his mother, but again, he turned away. No? Please, Noah? I'm interested. What about this one? I showed him the same picture where he stood with a man, woman, and the same girl with brown hair and dimple. Is this your uncle? Cousin? But again, he shut down. He stared at the floor. Your dad's not around. You can talk to me. How come there are no pictures of you and your dad? I looked up with saddened eyes. That's why you don't talk, huh? Your dad has a temper, doesn't he? <sighs> yeah. I know he does. Please, Noah. I need to find out what's going on. 
I'm so confused. Can you please help me? Who are these people? Can't you tell me? Don't you want to talk to me? <clears throat> I rubbed my eyes and ran my hands through my hair. I was so frustrated. The way Gavin attacked me and the fact that his son won't talk made it obvious that he was abusive. Does your dad hit you, Noah? You can tell me. You can. Does he hit you? Mm -mm. But he shook his head no. He doesn't? <clears throat> I was honestly shocked. Your dad has never hit you, Noah? But again, he shook his head. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. I stood and made my way back into the living room. I looked at the rest of the pictures on the wall, trying to make sense of everything. Gavin walked in. Blood and feathers splattered his shirt. He had a dead bird in his hand. Hello, dear. I'll be preparing supper now. Okay. What are you doing? Nothing. Some pictures came down. Aye. I'll put them back up after supper. Need to find me some more tape. What happened to all your frames? What? The picture frames? I got rid of them. Why? What? Why would you get rid of the frames? They were old. Nasty. Nadia didn't like them either. Now let me be. I'm gonna cook. It'll be ready in no time. Why don't you go check on Noah? I already did. Oh? Yeah. He's fine. He's playing. Good. Good. I set the pictures on top of the fireplace. No, no! What? Not there! They could fall into the fire. As Gavin came over, I backed up. But he didn't approach me. Dear, you can't be doing that. He grabbed the photos off the fireplace and flipped through them. He then spun around to face me. Where is it? Where's what? Nadia. Where's Nadia? It should be there. Those are the pictures that fell. Although I was lying. The Nadia picture was still hanging after our fight. I just pulled it down to ask Noah about it. But it should have still been in the pile. No, no, no. It's not here. Where is it? I don't know. I remembered showing it to Noah. Maybe I dropped it in his room or in the hall. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to mention taking the photos to Noah's room. Where is it? I don't know, Gavin. Find it. We must find it. I'm sure it's here somewhere. We must find it and we must find it now. My body tensed as he nervously looked about the room. Was he going to have another fit? I took a step backwards. Mm. That's when I noticed Noah, just past the dining table. He held up the photo. Boy, why do you have it? I told you not to touch these! Gavin smacked Noah in the face with the back of his hand. Give it here! Don't hit him! Don't tell me how to raise me, son. It's not his fault! He shouldn't have this. <laughs> these pictures stay in here. It's all we have. All you have? Now go, boy. Back to your room. And don't come out until I call you for supper. Go! <sighs> you too. What? Go to your room. I've had enough. I'm not a child. I didn't say you were, dear. But I've had enough, and I need to get supper ready. He stared down at the photos as he talked. Go. Now. And don't come out till I call you. I'm checking on Noah. But he grabbed my arm and pulled me back. My heart started beating rapidly. You won't check on the boy, because the boy don't need checking on. Now go to your room before I lose me temper a second time today. His grip relaxed and eventually he released me. I took a couple steps back, our eyes remaining locked. And dear, don't touch the photos no more. Nadia didn't fall earlier. You took her down. What? Uh, uh, no, I... I didn't. <laughs> You're a terrible liar, Delilah. You did. You took her down. He caressed the photo before looking back at me and smiling his crooked smile. Now go. I'll call you when supper's ready. I didn't know what to do or say. So instead, I just slowly went back to my room.
The Stone House. Written and edited by Robert M. Lamb. Starring Corey Pettit as Delilah, Robert M. Lamb as Val, Jack Austin as Gavin. Co-starring Dennis Caldwell. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review. Visit 7 for more podcasts such as this. This has been a 7 Lamb production.